around the world in 80 days. Mel Brooks' brand of comic humour transfers from the large screen to the large hotel with a brand new TV series, The Nut House. That is the... Kinky. <laughs> Listen, keep a lid on it. I can tell by the looks of you, you're nothing but troublemakers here to raise hell. I've been pestered to death again by that voracious hotel chain from Houston, Texplex. Yes, big Jake Herder, right? Still making overtures to try and if buy us I've told him once, I've told him a thousand times, the Nut House is not for sale! Good girl! Join us in the Nut House next Saturday at 9.50 on 2. Well, Café René will be the venue over on one in a minute for more unlikely goings-on in wartime France. Allo, allo. And a fractured French is in our menu here on two now, where it's rapido. <laughs> again your friendly neighborhood Frenchman and I would like to thank you once more for your continued support. It makes me feel good, huh? Yes, real good. This week we have a satisfying mix of John Lurie, Stone Roses, Willie Mitchell, Beastie Boys and Texas, the group, uh, not the state. First of all, John Lurie, who was the easiest to talk to for the simple reason that he came to visit us in Paris and when I tell you why, you will laugh a lot. Everybody knows the John Lurie of the Lange Lizards, who, by the way, celebrate their 10th anniversary this year. Happy birthday, lads. Or the John Lurie, writer of film music, for last week's guest, Jim Jarmusch. But not many people know that John Lurie is also a fashion aficionado. <laughs> I'll say it again. Fashion aficionado. Who didn't think twice about appearing in the Comme des Garçons fashion show along with the actor John Malkovich. Why? Uh, Rapido was there and tried to understand. <laughs> The boutiques of Paris are a world away from the seedy settings of Jim Jarmusch's movies, but John Lurie seems to be at home in either. He was equally comfortable composing the soundtrack for the latest Jarmusch outing, Mystery Train. Well, this was the easiest soundtrack I've ever done, because I, I got the guitar, I got a videotape of the movie, I got a very long videotape, you know, three, four hours long before it was really edited. So I, I just let, lay on my bed, the guitar on my lap, Play, tape recorder here. It's great. It's really a, a breeze, you know. I could have written eight hours of music for Mystery Train. It was like, but the uh, hard part was actually cutting it down and making it simple. Because you got to make it, for film music, you have to make it very, very simple. John's killing two birds with his current promotional tour. As well as pushing Mystery Train, he was also in Paris to promote the new LP by the Lounge Lizards, the band in which he plays his main instrument, the saxophone. I think the last album is definitely a hundred times better than anything else we did. Uh, you know, when it began, it was exciting. Then there was this kind of real dip. Because actually, as the music got better, we became less popular, you know? <laughs> which was like a very confusing kind of thing. They were very hip in the beginning, you know, but we didn't really play very well. Earlier in the day, John and Dangerous Liaison star John Malkovich did a spot of modeling for Comme des Garçons. I can't do it all by myself. You got to help me, baby. What kind of job is modeling for a grown man? Well, you know, it's John Malkovich, Julian Sands, me, you know, I, I mean, I'm not in bad company. 
I think Miles Davis did it once, no? Jean Michel Bescat and Francesco Clemente. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, for me, it's all right if it's just that hour when we do it. But then if you know about it, it's kind of a drag in a way. But I, I don't know. Uh, lei permette, signorina, non credo sia tutto perduto, si può rifare. E come? Oh, scusi la mia intromissione, ma... Professor Cusatelli, ci siamo conosciuti alla stazione. Ah... Lurie, Jamush, Tom Waits, Roberto Bonini, Claire Denis, Vim Vendors, they all seem to end up working in each other's movies. It's as if they've formed a film family. I mean, I'm friends with Vim, I'm friends with Jim Jarmusch, I'm friends with Claire, I'm friends with Benini, I'm friends with Tom Waits. This idea of a film family... I don't know, if there's a film family, then I'm the mauvais garçon of this, of this family, you know? And so then, it's a little strange. Um, if I heard that they were all having dinner all together, I wouldn't go, you know what I mean? But I would have a dinner with any one of them individually. In demand for both his music and his acting, Lurie can afford to be choosy when it comes to work offers. He explained what he's got his sights set on doing next. I'm going to go to Los Angeles on Sunday and do this tiny little thing in the new David Lynch movie. I can't actually see as many directors. I'm going to direct a movie soon. I don't know, one year or two years and I'm going to do it. But um, so that's why I did that thing in Last Temptation of Christ to watch Scorsese. Now I'm going to go watch David Lynch work. And I think this is a good way, you know. So that's the kind of guys. You, my British friends, must already know that one of the hottest English bands of the moment is called the Stone Roses. They have held the top of the indie charts since their single She Bangs the Drum, and it looks as if they are following the tracks of the Rolling Stones. In